So today I'm going to start by asking you not to leave any insulting comments for the owner of this system. He was nice enough to let me make a video of his place and for me, as an audiophile, I like seeing other people's system and the love they put into building their system. So that's why I thought it would be a good idea to show you. So today I'm going to introduce you to another setup of uh, another person that I know. So I know this friend um, even before I start this uh, YouTube channel. And today I'm going to give you a tour of his place. Uh, what's really amazing about this uh, room is the aqu acoustic treatment. Now this is professionally done. And uh, these big uh, speakers, uh, I'll go over them. It's not going to be in detail, uh, but uh, I think that you guys might find this very interesting. Let's start by uh, talking about his name, SuperNet One Integrated Amp, and the name DAC. Now, name is a very special product. Just like Macintosh, you have uh, almost like a cult following. Now, I heard this uh, system about a year and a half ago, and it sounded great. Now, my friend here told me that they have this very open sound with a lot of body. You know, he loves the fact that all name components integrate really well. Uh, he got two of these uh, aftermarket Teddy Pardo power supply. And he told me it is a significant upgrade and he preferred it over the more expensive name version. Now, he does wish there is more power though, as this uh, one is only 80 watt, this integrated amp. And the Quad 989 speakers uh, can really benefit from more power. Now, I personally love the look of these names. They're sleek, they're compact. And each component, whether the streamer, the DAC, or the amplifier have this look that blends perfectly. Now they're not heavy like the Macintosh. As much as I like Macintosh, they're crazy big and heavy. Every time I move my Macintosh, it's like moving a fridge. Now he no longer uses uh, these names and they have been sitting there for a while. And the reason is because he has moved to Higo. Now Higo, for those who don't know about this Norway company, now they produce excellent products from DAX to amps. Uh, we have the Higo H300 integrated amp and the HD30 DAC here. Now I personally have been searching for one myself, but they're very expensive, even on the used market. So I never gotten one. Now I had the Higo HD12 DAC before, and that's how I got to know this company. The H300 here, it's about 5,500 US and the HD30 is about 5,000 US. So we are looking close to 14,000 Canadian here, uh, new with the taxes. The H300 has power and it's very smooth. It's rated at 250 watts at eight ohm. Now it has very, very good control on his Quad 989 speakers. And this is an all-in-one solution where um, it even comes with a very good DAC. Now I asked him the difference between the, the built-in DAC in the H300 integrated amp and the standalone HD30 DAC. Now he told me if you listen to both DACs separately, you will most likely not hear a big difference as the H300 integrated amp does have a very good DAC. However, if you were to do an A-B test like he did, the HD30 is more detailed, more smooth and has more depth. I personally felt that the H, the Higo, was very smooth. Not the same kind of smoothness as the Macintosh, just different. You can tell the sound it produced is in the big leagues. Now, it has great control, very musical, but yet very detailed. My friend here loves it, and he he's looking forward to auditioning the new Higo H590. Now, let's get to the Quad 989 speakers. Now, some of my viewers mentioned to me that I should give Electro static uh, speakers a try. I heard these speakers about a year and a half ago with the names at the time. I was already buying expensive speakers, but I was at the beginning of my learning of what to listen for. So for me at the time, I thought, ah, eh, they were very smooth, but rode off. Not my cup of tea as I wanted that high resolution sound. Now fast forward to today, and now with more experience and knowledge, I was laughing at myself that I was looking at greatness a year and a half ago without knowing it. Now these quads are amazing, jaw-dropping, incredible. One of the reasons I keep trying all kinds of speakers is exactly for this, to experience what is out there. There's only so much I can pick up on reading. This is another chapter in my audio journey as I learn what electrostatic speakers can do. The separation on these speakers are out of this world. These speakers can only go up to 15 kilohertz. 
yet. Yet, because the instruments are so, so well separated, I can, I can hear every single instrument crystal clear. The last time a speaker blew me away like this in terms of separation was on a $100,000 system. Well, and a $300,000 system. But what we have here today is a $30,000 system. I can literally picture all the instruments floating in front of me, all with their own space. I always thought that you need a tube setup to experience that sense of air. Nope. This full solid state setup has it. And in fact, one of the best I've ever come across. Now, some people will still add a super tweeter with these speakers to give that extra resolution. I myself cannot imagine how good it will sound with it. And I don't really feel like I'm missing anything in terms of resolution. I know it's not high res and detail like my Canton because we were listening at my place uh, that morning. Uh, so I, we were playing the same track at my place and over here. And I, I don't really care that it's not high def uh, because I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I usually am not a big fan of speakers that are rolled off on the top. It's like turning down the treble with tone control. But as I said, not in this case. In fact, you can listen forever with these speakers without listening fatigue. Now, these speakers are excellent for voice. It has a lot of heart. Great speakers if you like jazz, classical and opera. Now, my friend told me it might not be a good idea to pair these with tubes at, as he worries it might be too smooth. Now, next, these speakers disappear. Now, you you imagine that a big speaker like that is hard to disappear, but no, they do. When I close my eyes, I don't see or hear the speakers. Sound just appears out of thin air. You see, with normal speakers, you sometimes can hear the box of the speaker, if, if that makes any sense. These are open design, so they don't have this issue. The speakers are also dipole, meaning sound comes from the front and the back. And that results in a sound stage that is very deep. Sound stage stretches from the front of the speaker all the way deep to the back. I can picture myself walking onto the stage and I love it. Now, if you, um, so my friend told me, if you listen to church choir on these, it's like o OMG. And uh, for me, it's one of the best speakers I've listened to in terms of creating a grand, deep and tall soundstage with lots of air and to top it off, extremely musical with soul. Now, what is how we're lacking though, is bass. Now, I know these speakers are rated to go down to 33 hertz, but there, there's no punch and I wish the bass was faster and more tight. Now, to solve this problem, he added a subwoofer, but just not any subwoofer. Now, the reason I'm okay with adding a subwoofer to a system now is because of my experience with this system in the past. As I mentioned, I heard this system a while ago. At the time, it was the first system I ever come across where I can feel the sub, but I cannot hear it. The sub brings more weight and presence to instrument, and it makes the whole presentation more believable. So for example, you can almost believe that there is a, a drum in the room when you hear a track with it. And the sub was built by him and his friends because they could not find a musical sub that is good enough for them. This is a 12 inch 4 ohm scan speak woofer from the Discovery series. Goes down to 15 hertz and is powered by a class AB 500 watt amp. Now they added absorbent foam uh, inside to deal with the vibration created by standing waves. The cabinet is built with um, a 1.5 inch Russian plywood on the side and 2.5 inch on the front and back. Now, as my friend put it, it's too bad not many know this Discovery series uh, scan speaks woofers, as it has one of the best quality to price performance. Now, to sum it up, this is a musical sub and not a home theater sub, so it does not focus on being punchy. Now, let's move on to the star of this video, the room. Now, this room is fully treated. You have diffusion panels on the side and they are on the rail. The reason is because he built the room so that he can change between a diffusion panel and an absorption panel easily. Now he does that because he changes speakers occasionally. Now for this quad, it works better with the diffusion panel in front and the absorption panel at the back. With another speaker, he might reverse it. Now the placement of all these panels were all calculated on the computer. Now in the corners, you have bass trap but he added an extra homemade diffusion panel because the quads are bipolar, so sounds projected backwards too. Now he said with this extra diffusion panel, the sense of air is further enhanced. Now in the back where I'm sitting, he added these uh, resonators with uh, rock wool inside to get rid of any further standing waves uh, because the bass trap he had was not enough. 
Now, if you look at the ceiling, it's also treated. So you can, you, so you have these a uh, cloth that allows uh, sound to travel through, and then there's four inch of empty space, then six inch of rock wool. So there's no sound reflecting from the ceiling. Now I've listened to a few setup with uh, the room treated in the past, and I have to say this is one of the best. The coolest part, he built everything himself. So instead of spending, I don't know, a few hundred bucks on a panel, for example, it cost him 30 bucks. The whole room sound treatment cost him maybe a grand, and that's peanuts compared to his system, but the return is so worth it. Now, on my YouTube channel over the last few months, I've gotten many comments encouraging me to have my room treated. I always thought that my room is good enough, and boy am I wrong. When a room is fully treated like this, it elevates the system so much more. Now, we, because his system is 30,000, my system is more than 30,000, and mine sound like an AM radio compared to his. When I was listening there, I, I really wanted to slow down and really go into deep listening. It reminds me of my friend's uh, $300,000 system where once you step into the room, it's like you have entered a library. It's so quiet that you can hear the pin dropping. Although I know room treatment is important in theory, it's one thing to know something and another thing to experience it. Today, I've experienced it. My takeaway from today is first, you have to make sure your system has good synergy. Magic happens when your equipment matches. And this you learn by trial or suggestions from uh, your friends and other people, right? So next, you treat your room and with both, you create the perfect marriage. So guys, you're right. 50% of the system performance is from the system and 50% is from the room. And now I don't even feel like upgrading my system anymore. There's no point until I get my room right. Now he did mention to me his room is actually not big enough for these quad to shine its best. Uh, his friend keep joking about uh, taking down one of the walls, move the toilet to create a bigger space. And the funny part is, if you know their background, they actually have the expertise, the resource, and the knowledge to do it. Yeah, who knows, maybe they'll do it one day. So I'm gonna wrap it up at this point. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you have links to your own system, feel free to share it uh, in the comment section. Now, a big thank you to my friend for sharing his system. And if you have something nice uh, to say, leave him a message, it'll be much appreciated. Now for the sound demo, hmm, I'm not sure it's worth uploading as the point of this quad is to create that ginormous sound stage and whatever you hear on your speaker will not be able to reproduce it. Now I did record some uh, non-mainstream tracks because um, I, I really enjoy listening to those tracks when I was there. Um, I'll see, may, I'll see if it's worth to upload it. Okay, guys. So uh, till next time.